I remember asking God if this was something he was calling me to. Because there was always this restlessness, this kind of aching in my heart, in the searching for love. And I remember wondering and being able to understand that perhaps this is a love that, that ultimately can really only be fulfilled in Him. And I think that's true for us all, obviously. But, um, but yet I wondered. God began planting seeds early on. Um, so He gave me a Catholic upbringing and a good family. Uh, and I learned from the example of my parents and aunts and uncles and grandmother, people of deep faith, set wonderful examples for me. I started thinking about it senior year of high school, but I just, I knew at that point that I didn't know what I wanted to do. So I uh, con went to college and continued to discern all through college and kept my options open. Uh, I double majored in economics and philosophy for that reason. I was reading about this call through baptism that we all have to evangelize, and I was trying to figure out, how am I going to evangelize? How am I going to live simply? How am I going to live in community with others? Because I'm not a hermit. I can't be all alone for the rest of my life. I need other people. And then I discovered the Dominicans. And in one sentence describing the apostolic life in the order of preachers, I said, oh my God. This is everything that I have been wanting right here. This is it. And so to this day, I'm still excited by the prospect of living in community, of preaching the gospel, and of a life dedicated to study. You know, when you get past the romanticized ideals, when you get past the things which society kind of puts around the concept of love, uh, these things that are really many ways limited and and when you get a touch of of what love truly is when you get a touch of and a glimpse of god what it really is you begin to realize that it's it's not so much about what you are getting or about what you are gaining as much as it is about what's what you are giving and what you are gaining in the god And as I was moving through high school and then on to college, uh, the call was still in the back of my mind. Didn't know exactly though how that was supposed to be lived out. Checked out a few communities, looked at my diocese, and I just didn't feel the, the fit. So I kept, I actually started working at a bank for two years and um, had the opportunity to attend a Dominican come and see. And it was funny, because even on that come and see, um, I knew I was impressed with the order and could see myself living this way of life. That's something that resonates when you find a community that is joyful and loving. Well, it's a very compelling thing. So um, looking back now, I can say that's one of the things that I was very drawn to, although I don't know how aware of it I was at the time. Um, probably what I was more aware of at the time was the um, the way that the brothers were enamored of the mission they had been given. They had a sense that this was uh, an urgent mission, a mission of which the world had desperate need. They had a sense of the responsibility that they were given to promote it, to promote it faithfully and effectively. I dare each and every one of you to become what Christ wants you to be. They seemed excited about it, and all of that resonated with me because I had had these experiences from when, even when I was younger that said, my goodness, if this, if this reality of knowing who God is is as important as it seems to be, then my gosh, people out there need to know this, and there are a lot of people who don't know this, and we've got to do something about it, and in fact, God wants to do something about it, and He's asking us to assist in that process. It's very difficult to tell people, what is it like to be a Dominican? I don't know, it's, this is just who I am. It's being a man of prayer, being a man that loves Jesus Christ, that loves the church, that loves committing every moment to the salvation of souls. 
and the daily nitty-gritty is neither here nor there. That's mundane and boring. But when you realize, when you wake up in the morning, you realize, I'm recommitting myself, I'm doing it again, and going through the same routines of the day, but always being aware that you've done something that, is, that really, really means something in the history of the universe, bringing Christ to other people. That's what living Dominican life is to me. Well, I think in considering vocation for a Catholic, the first thing people ought to think about is the church in the sense of what does the church need from me? I belong to a community and I have to, they do so much for me, I have to do something for them. What do they most need from me? We all come into the order with a variety of lived experiences. Prayer lives, our faith journeys are all unique. And so when we come into the order, the order is molding us into Dominicans, but it's a process. And becoming a Dominican is a process to help me figure out, is this the life I'm supposed to lead? One year as a novice, which means beginner. A beginning year, which is a wonderful year for prayer, for the discernment, informal study. Um, that leads into a two-year commitment of vows, which goes by like this. And with, after those two years are completed, we renew for another two years. Um, ultimately, a five-year process before we make solemn vows. I, Lord Andrew Mark Capella, make profession and promise obedience to God, to the Blessed Mary, and to the Blessed Donna, and to you, Brother Michael and Because I felt very called, very much called to marriage for a very long time in my life, and I just thought I'd have, by the time I was the age I am now, I'd, be, I'd have five kids and a good job and a wonderful wife and all, all the standard American dream things. But when it came down to making that decision, when I was called, when I believe I was called to religious life, weighing out what would, what made sense for me was, what is it that I just can't live without?